I don't think anyone here would disagree that uh, if you're sitting in a chair that's facing the wall would affect your mood a certain way, or that sitting in a room painting a certain color might also affect your mood. But the question is, is that science? Okay, our next topic is Mugel, uh, forgive my German pronunciation, Mugel kinesiology. Mugel is the German word for furniture. <laughs> Kinesiology is the study of movement involving human muscles. Another way to say that is furniture moving. <laughs> Jim Underdown, that's him, uh, uh, taught, this, taught this section due to his expertise in college. <laughs> he worked for a movie company. Okay. It was in this section that Jim taught us the great mantra known to all professional movers worldwide. Lift with your legs, not with your back. <laughs> Certainly, nurses could do something like that, right? Hey, remember, it was sanctioned by the state of California. <laughs> Next topic was apophenia. Uh, some of you may, may know this more as, as pareidolia. Uh, technically, it's known as uh, seeing patterns or connections in random or meaningless data. And we've all seen examples of this. Religious faces and toast, or burritos. A giant face on the plateau of Mars or even Karen Stahl's nose poke tart. If you're not familiar with that, I suggest you find that article and read it, it's hilarious. This next topic doesn't really need uh, much of an explanation once you kind of think about it a second. <laughs> Vapor and reflective surfaces, or smoke and mirror. <laughs> next came uh, Shei Yu, and uh, other, do there happen to be any Chinese speakers in the audience? Okay, well, I'll make it easy for you. Uh, Shei Yu is the Chinese word for snake oil. Okay. We were given permission by the state of California to teach you about the healing properties of snake oil. Okay. Don't be alarmed, we really weren't selling any snake oil. For goodness sakes, that would be illegal. We want to break the law, wouldn't we? Our next topic, <clears throat> canopiary flexibility. Anyone? Anyone on this one? You guys, you know, you're pretty well educated. You've been here for three days. You've seen Randy, you've seen Simon Singh, all those guys. Uh, anybody have any guesses as to what that might be? No, no. For those of you who are frantically typing this word out on your iPhone, <laughs> let me save you some data fees. Okay? Karen Kensick from earlier made this word up. You cannot find this word on Google. <laughs> <laughs> we love that word, nuclear flexibility. The CBRN approved this in spite of the fact that a 30-second Google search would have shown CFI care to be teaching bogus courses. This could have saved them a lot of embarrassment, which we'll see in a minute. And if that wasn't bad enough, there's one more topic that we covered. One can, that can be found online or even in, remember them kids? Dictionaries. Okay? Anthropomancy. Okay? Sounds like a similar word, but there's really only one, one way to define this word. The ancient practice of divining the future by using living human entrails. <laughs> now, it doesn't take a psychic to realize that the person whose entrails you're using, what their future is going to be. Since <laughs> okay. so you just disavow them on stage. So, <clears throat> here we have a picture of Jim Under now. <laughs> Proving once again that he's a true renaissance man. <laughs> Demonstrating his spectacular anthropomancy skills with a simulated corpse, however, by cutting open a living person and taking a reading. This was quite the lively demonstration. <laughs> it had, it had the audience both spellbound and horrified <laughs> as blood and guts were spilled onto the stage in a very dramatic manner by Jim. <laughs> Well, we cleaned our hands of the fake blood. We handed out CEUs to the brave nurses who had attended. There were about six or seven in the audience. And um, eventually, however, the CBRN learned what we had done, and they revoked our license. We actually, no, 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 no. We actually were happy that they did this. We thought this is a good thing. There is someone there paying attention. Okay, that's a pretty good thing. But we looked again and again, and we saw ClearSight still had their certification. But then finally, we had some good news. About a year later, 
Governor Schwarzenegger, yes, I said Governor Schwarzenegger, <laughs> fired the entire CBRN staff. Those people we've been dealing with for five years. Now, I'd like to take the credit that we did a good job, and we did in a sense, because the reason that they that were given by Schwarzenegger was that uh, the board um, wouldn't censure or fire nurses who had, oh, they were convicted felons, for example. And it clearly says in the rules, if you have committed a felony, you can't no longer be a nurse. And another thing that they, that they uh, were fired because uh, it was found out that they weren't responding to complaints about the nurses. So that's the reason they were fired. <clears throat> but we in the IIG, we take certain pride in the knowledge that we ourselves had something to do with their dismissal. <laughs> so let me sum it all up. This is us very proudly standing here trying to stay away from Jim and the blood. The stage got a little slippery there. Um, I want to just reemphasize, this was a grassroots um, approach to skepticism. It started with one person's complaint, Wendy. We worked as a group. None of us were paid a penny for this. We worked within the existing system. We found their, what their rules were. We worked within their rules. And we had a profound effect on the real world. Here's a list for all those who have helped us over the years. I thank you all. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to take them. We have, yeah, we have time for one question. I saw your hand up there. So. Hi, Sharon from Alexander, Virginia. Um, did you work with any of your local politicians, take any of this information to them, say, hey, look, this is a government board, why aren't you doing something about um, it? Yeah, we, we did. Uh, the, the, uh, there's an agency above the state board that we, we, we call, we sent messages, we, we copied emails and things, that we, and letters that we sent. We never heard from anyone. Not, not anyone. Yeah, yeah. We were, we were thinking of contacting the, the state attorney, but then we kind of thought, let's, let's do the class. That's kind of fun. That's really all we have time for, so thank you, Brian.